Organic chemistry is the study of the chemistry of carbon compounds that bonded to other carbon atoms as well as to many other elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and the halogens. The simplest organic compounds are the hydrocarbons, which is compounds that compose of carbon and hydrogen atoms only. Carbon always forms four covalent bonds that may be present as four single bonds per atom, two single bond and one double bond, or one single bond and one triple bond. In this video, we are going to have a look at the definition of the structure formula, draw the structure formula in the forms of expanded condensed and skeletal structures, and also classify the carbon and hydrogens. Molecular formula shows the actual number of atoms for each element present in one molecule of the compound, but it does not show how these atoms are arranged. For example, in C4H8O, I only know that this compound got 4 carbon, 8 hydrogen, and 1 oxygen, but I didn't know how these atoms are bonded to each other. But in the structure formula, it shows the actual number of atoms, their relative placements, and the bonds between them. Okay, we will use the same example, which is C4H8O. It can be a butanol or a butanon, depends on how the atoms are arranged. There are three ways to draw the structure formula. The first one is the expanded structure. In expanded structure, we are going to show all the covalent bonds between the atoms, but this structure does not represent the actual shape of the molecule. For example, right, so we have this compound, all the covalent bonds between the atoms are shown. It is also possible to draw a molecule without showing any bonds between the atoms at all. This is called a condensed structure. In this structure, the carbon-hydrogen and carbon-carbon single bonds are usually not shown. The branch or substituent groups are shown in brackets after the carbon atom to which they are bonded. For example, to change this structure into the condensed structure, right? so first we are going to label the carbon atom. right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. So we have five carbon atoms, right? And then let's start with the first carbon, right? In the first carbon, we have three hydrogen atoms, so CH3. And then the first carbon is connected to the second carbon, which is with one hydrogen atoms. But in second carbon, we have an alkyl group, which is our branch. Okay, so we are going to use the bracket, right? So we have CH3. Okay, so our carbon number 5 also got 3 hydrogen. And then next to second carbon, we have the third carbon. So the third carbon got 2 hydrogen. The fourth carbon also got 2 hydrogen. And next to the, four, to the fourth carbon, we have the OH group. So this is the condensed structure based on the expanded structure that we got here. A skeletal structure formula is another way to represent the organic compounds. In this structure, every bond in carbon chain is represented as a line in a zigzag manner while the rings are drawn as polygons. In this structure, carbon atom and hydrogen atoms that bonded to the carbon are not shown, but the functional group that is attached to the carbon atom are shown. For example, to convert this structure into the skeletal structure, first we are going to label the carbon, okay, just like in condensed structure, okay, from the expanded structure, label the carbon atoms, okay, and then we are going to start with our carbon change without the branch, okay. So since we have the carb the four carbon, okay, so we are going to draw these four carbon in a zigzag manner, alright. So one. Two, three, four. All right. So this is our carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, and carbon number four. And then on carbon number two, we have our fifth carbon. Right. So this is our carbon number five. All right. So in this structure, okay, uh, if you can see, carbon atom is present wherever the line intersect with another line. Okay, so 
each corner here we got carbon atoms and the hydrogen atoms are assumed to complete each of the carbons for bonds for example here for the first carbon we have one bonding so it is uh, actually there is another three bonding that this carbon attached to another three hydrogen so it will complete the four bonds of carbon okay so the second carbon got three bonding and then here actually we have another one bonding which is with hydrogen right and then all right so we have the oh group attached to the carbon number four right so the oh group here is our functional group so the bonding between uh, the atoms okay the o and h atom we have to show it in our skeletal structure Right, so let's try another example. Okay, so we have an expanded structure here. So first, label our carbon atoms, right? And then try to convert the expanded structure into the condensed structure. Okay, so we have the first carbon, right? With three hydrogen, so CH3. And second carbon have one hydrogen. And then we have a branch, which is which is our fourth carbon okay so use the bracket so the fourth carbon also got uh, three hydrogen and then we have our third carbon right ch3 okay it got three hydrogen so actually we can also read uh, write it as ch3 ch right and then ch32 okay so we are going to uh, Put these two CH3 together, or you can also wrote it as CH3. Okay, just put all the CH3 group together. So we have three CH3, one, two, three. Okay, and then the second carbon, which is a CH, right? And then to convert it into skeletal structure, okay, so again, we are going to depend on our expanded structure. It is much easier if you have the expanded structure first, okay. So we have three carbon in the straight line, right. So first carbon, second carbon, and the third carbon. And then on the second carbon, we have the fourth carbon, right. So this is the skeletal form of this structure, okay. So here we have the skeletal form, which is in a ring form, okay. So if you can see here, since it has three carbon, okay, so one, two, three, okay, the shape is a triangle, right. So to convert it into this expanded structure, okay, so we have our first carbon here, right. So the first carbon is bonded to the second carbon second carbon bonded to the third carbon and then first carbon is connected to the third carbon right so each carbon here is if you can see it got two bonding so another two bonding actually is the hydrogen atoms okay so two bonding another two is the hydrogen atom same goes to our third carbon okay two bonding another two is the hydrogen atom so we have to make sure that all our carbon got four bonds okay so to convert it into the condensed structure so let's label it again one two three okay so the first carbon got two hydrogen okay ch2 all right so again the first carbon is bonded to the second carbon second carbon also got two hydrogen right ch2 and the second carbon is bonded to the third carbon ch2 and then the first carbon is bonded to the third carbon right so in the expanded and condensed structure if we have a ring you have to uh, maintain the shape of the ring okay so just follow the shape of the ring of your skeletal form right so next we have skeletal form as well okay so we have one carbon and also two carbon right so in expanded form this is our first carbon and it is one to our second carbon the first carbon here in the skeletal form only shown one bonding so another three bonding here is actually our hydrogen right so 
Now, this carbon is complete with four bonding. Okay, and then the second carbon is bonded to the double bond O and the O H. Right, so now our carbon, all of our carbons got the four bonding. And then to convert it into the condensed structure, so the first carbon got three hydrogens, so CH3. The second carbon, right, we got C double bond O, O, H. Or you can also wrote it down as CH3, C, O, O, H, like this. Okay, so last but not least, we have a condensed structure. So again, label our carbon, one, two, three, and four. Okay, so draw the extended structure first. Okay, the first carbon got three hydrogen, right? It got three hydrogen and it responded to the second carbon, right? So the second carbon got only one hydrogen and it responded with double bond, third carbon, right? The third carbon also got one hydrogen and then the third carbon is bonded to the fourth carbon, which it have a two hydrogen and also a Cl group, okay? So, to convert it into the skeletal form, okay? So, let's label it again on our expanded structure, okay? So, we have one, two, three, four carbon, okay? So, one, two, three, four, and then we have a double bond between carbon number two and carbon number three, so a double bond, and then we have a Cl group on the fourth carbon. So this is the skeletal structure of our, uh, of this structure. So how are we going to classify the carbon and hydrogen atoms? The classification of the carbon atom is depends on the number of carbon atom attached to it. The primary carbon is where the carbon atoms attached to it is one. So, if this carbon got only one carbon attached to it and it is a primary carbon. For the secondary carbon, there is two carbon attached to it. For the tertiary, three carbon attached to it. Quaternary, four carbon attached to it. For the hydrogen atom, it only depends on the, the, on the type of carbon it attached to. So, if the hydrogen atom is attached to the primary carbon, then it is a primary hydrogen. For the secondary carbon, it is a secondary hydrogen. In the tertiary carbon, it is a tertiary hydrogen. But the hydrogen atom does not have the quaternary hydrogen because in the quaternary carbon, there is no other place for the hydrogen to be placed since carbon only got for bonding. Let's do some examples. How many primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary carbon in the following alkanes? So let's have a look at of each carbon. All right, so the first carbon only got one carbon attached to it, then it is a primary carbon. The second carbon here we got four carbon attached to it, then it is a quaternary carbon. Next we have this carbon attached to two carbon, so it is a secondary carbon. Alright, so this carbon attached to only one carbon, so it is a primary carbon. This carbon also attached to one carbon, so it is a primary carbon. While this carbon got three carbon attached to it, so it is a tertiary carbon. This carbon got two carbon attached to it, then it is a secondary carbon. This carbon only have one carbon attached to it, then it is a primary carbon. This carbon got three carbon attached to it. It is a tertiary carbon, this carbon and this carbon only got one carbon attached to it, so both are primary carbon. So the number of primary carbon is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay, so we have 6 primary carbon. Alright, the secondary carbon, 1, 2 only. Alright, so 2 secondary carbon. The tertiary carbon, we have 1, 2. Alright, and then the quaternary carbon, we only have one here. So that's how you classify each carbon. So remember, the carbon that you, you will classify is only for the sp3 carbon, means that the carbon only have a single bond. So now, the question asks us to 
identify how many primary, secondary and tertiary hydrogen in the following alkanes. So we already know that we have six primary carbon, two secondary carbon, two tertiary carbon and one quaternary carbon. So we have to calculate each hydrogen that are bonded to the primary carbon. Okay, so we have 18 primary hydrogen. Okay, for the secondary hydrogen, we have four secondary hydrogen since each secondary hydrogen got two hydrogen. Okay, in tertiary carbon, all right, so we have one, one tertiary hydrogen and it makes two tertiary hydrogen. Okay, so there is no quaternary hydrogen. So if the question gives you a condensed structure and it asks uh, you to classify the carbon and hydrogen atoms, it is better for you to convert it into the expanded form first. So to convert the condensed structure into expanded structure, so first we must label our carbon. Okay, just label our carbon. So we have five carbon atoms. All right, so now we are going to expand it. Okay, so we have carbon number one attached to two, two attached to three, three attached to four, and then we have a branch here which is two attached to carbon number five. Okay, so the first carbon got three hydrogen, right? So the second carbon got one hydrogen, the third carbon got two hydrogen, so the fourth and the fifth carbon got three hydrogen, right? So this is our expanded structure and then in this structure it is easier for us to see how many carbon are attached to our sp3 carbon. So let's have a look at our first carbon. So since it is an sp3 carbon and it is attached to one carbon only, so this is a primary carbon. So this carbon attached to three carbon, so tertiary carbon. This carbon attached to two carbon, so secondary carbon. This carbon attached to only one carbon, so it's primary, and this carbon is also a primary carbon. So the primary hydrogen we have here is 3, 6, 9. So we have 9 primary hydrogen. Okay, for the secondary hydrogen, okay, so the hydrogen that is attached to the secondary carbon here, we got 2. All right, and then the tertiary, carb tertiary hydrogen, so we have 1 tertiary carbon and 1 tertiary hydrogen. 